Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to Modified Episode 28, I believe it is. Yes, 28. Where we share with you vehicles that have been accessorised and modified for everyday use and full wheel driving. Let's meet the owner. Rudy, how you going, mate? Good, thanks, Ronnie. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks for uh, getting me out of my warm bed this cold morning. Oh, no worries. <laughs> it's a bit warmer now, though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Do you want to run our audience through make and model of vehicle? It's a Mitsubishi Pajero, uh, 2004 model, 3.2 litre turbo diesel, automatic. Automatic? Yeah. Beautiful. All right, we'll do like we always do and we'll run through the entire vehicle. So straight on to bar work. Rudy, what have we got here, mate? We've got a ARB bar. I don't know if it's a deluxe or, or whatever it is. It's definitely a winch bar. It's a definitely a winch bar. We've got a Ironman 12,000 pound winch with Dyneema rope. Bash plates through all the way to the gearbox. Um, the booze bash oh, plates. Oh wow, that does get a fair weight, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, check them out on Facebook. Our customer service is fantastic. Um, and their prices are very, very good. Fit very easily. You use the winch yeah. much? Never use it to recover myself. Only Nissans and uh, cruisers. <laughs> <laughs> Fair oh, enough. Oh boy, I'm going to start some trouble there, aren't I? <laughs> I've noticed you don't have side steps or sliders. Did you rip the side steps off? Uh, side steps, I've got steel side steps uh, slash sliders that I'm going to rhino coat. We're now at the rear barn, and I've noticed something really cool, but I'm going to try not to ask about it straight away. So we'll go on about the bar itself. Okay, the rear bar, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm not a fabricator. The Pajeros, there's no off-the-shelf rear bars, so I was forced into making this myself. Oh, you made it? I did, yeah. First time ever. Came up uh, relatively well. I'm, I'm fairly proud of it. it. Looks like one you buy at the shop. Um, oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it came up fairly good. It's got a few knickknacks on it. It's uh, got electronic locks. It's got stealth buttons uh, for this side. Yeah, right. Uh, so there's no need to latch or unlatch. They're two ton locks. Uh, they won't let go. We've got the shovel holder here. Telescopic light, your tracks holder. Let's just go back to this button. <laughs> Right, yes. That's really cool. The electronic locks are actually in the in the bars. Yep. We hit the lock and it releases the striker. So I'll just show you again on this one. Locks automatically. So if I just uh, hit the button, give it a bit of a push, it opens up. Wow. This is just a cheap winch on the back. Uh, it's a 9,000 pound ridge rider. I actually tend to use this one a lot more than the, than the front one comes in very handy with pulling the boat up on the trailer. Jerry can holders. Um, I've actually got a, a, another bar where I can pull this one off and simply have two spare wheels, but I prefer to have it with the jerry can holders. The jerry can holders double as toolboxes. Uh, so I can have two jerry can holders or I or can have toolbox. them both as toolboxes. This flips all the way back when I've got a jerry can on to, to lock the jerry can. And this is where I would usually have my recovery gear. So I don't have to go inside the car. Now onto the roof rack. Uh, this is a Geram Industries roof rack. It's an Outlander, uh, which I believe is a predecessor to the Tracklander. They look very similar. They uh, do look very similar, don't they? Yeah. Alloy roof rack, very light. So you always carry just one spare up there? Uh, no, I've just come back from Coral Bay. I thought I'd take two spares with me. I've simply left it up there, haven't pulled it off yeah, yet. Fair um, enough. Yeah. Awning on the other side, what size is that? 2.5 by 2 metre. We're now back at the front and we're going to cover lights and comms. We'll start with your lights. We've got uh, two Light Force HID spots. I can't remember how many inches this one is. Uh, I think it was a 20. Does that sound about right? It's two feet. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is. Um, and this one's, uh, this one's a spread. The HID is great for long distance, uh, and these for close up. I think it's a really good combination. That's plenty of light for you. Plenty of light. Yep. 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 And these are you kept them standard. Uh, these are just standard. So onto your comms then, UHF. GME brand. Yeah, yep. the DB on this one. Six, I think. Good range. Uh, reasonable range. Reasonable. Yep. Um, for what I use it for, for four-wheel driving with friends, we're usually in fairly close proximity. This is a telephone booster ah. 
uh, but I'm actually using it as a long range FM antenna, so I get better radio range. Okay. Yeah. For your music. For the music, music yeah. We're now on to lift and tyres, and we'll start with your tyres. Tyres, who ate five seventy sixteen Kumo Road Venture mud terrains. So we'll be looking at 33s. Yeah, the equivalent is 33s. So Kumo's Road Venture. Yeah. Uh, they look they look like you're close to new ones. Uh, very, very close, yep. Need upgrade soon. How long you had them for? Didn't get these new. Uh, they were already used when I purchased them. I had them for about six months. Had quite a bit of tread on them when I bought them. They do wear quite quickly. Road noise for mud terrains, not too bad at all. And I think I'll be going with the Kumo's again. Your rims? Rims 16 by 8 dynamic steelies, zero offset. Zero offset? Yeah. And you went zero offset to fit the bigger tyre? I had these tyres on the factory rims, but they sat too far in the guard and looked really quite silly. I decided to go the zeros to fill the guards out a bit more and give it a better stance. Suspension wise, what have we got under here? Iron Man 2 inch lift with 1 inch spacer front and rear to give it a total 3 inch lift. Okay. So two inches of travel, three inches of lift. Correct. So anything else going on with the suspension? Just failed to mention, we've got the airbags in the back, filler valves, one on each side of the rear bar. What PSI do you normally run on them? 30 when towing. Alrighty, going to look at the power plant now. Okie dokie. So I know you've done a lot of engine mods and uh, you're just running the motor back in. But before we get to that, let's talk about your battery system. So which one is your actual, is this the factory one? Yes, that's a, that's a factory. On these cars, you just squeeze them in, eh? Just barely. This is an ARB battery tray. There is a, uh, another type of tray where the battery can run oh, parallel yeah, no. to the firewall. Yeah. Uh, which means you can get uh, a same size battery in the back but uh, I quite like it being nice and compact in the manner that it is there. And you find that this is enough? Uh, it's more than enough for what I need. I really just run, run lights in a fridge. 80 amp hour? Uh, I believe it is 80 amp hour, 80 yes. Amp. Red Arc oscillator? Correct. Have you linked it so you can start, jump start? Uh, no. No, I'll have to look into how to do that. I don't yeah. know how to do that, and I think it's a good idea. For anyone else who hasn't got theirs linked up, like I haven't either, you can actually just put your jumper leads from this battery and jump that battery. You mentioned some interesting engine mods. Quite a lot of engine mods. This motor has only just been recently rebuilt. Uh, it's only done uh, around about 2,500 Ks. Prior to the rebuild, had a top mount intercooler. Which explains the... Uh, which explains the cutout and the bonnet scoop. These come factory with the front mount. The top mount gives much better throttle response. Um, so I will be putting that back on very soon. But at the moment it's, it's back to front mount obviously. It's back to your standard factory front mount, yeah. yes. I've got the upgraded uh, turbo, it's a Kinogawa uh, turbo that uh, basically just provides more volume of air per pound of boost. I've got the Blue Spark chip that has... Uh, this one here? Uh, correct. Uh, that has five different settings from economy right up to pretty wild. On the top setting it blows a lot of smoke but creates a lot of power. Soots a lot. Soots a lot, yes. Just behind that is the boost referenced controller for the methanol injection. Oh, the dial. Uh, the dial just there, yep. I've got that set at 12 psi, uh, so the methanol cuts in at 12 psi. Okay. And Do you feel a surge when it comes in? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bang for buck, methanol injection, guys. Cheap and easy. Other mods, catch can. Pretty standard issue. Just your standard fuel filter? Standard fuel filter, no secondary filter at this stage. Potentially look at it, but it's fairly tight in here at the moment, so I'm not really yeah. sure where I can fit another filter. What kind of air filter do you run in there? K&N. And that snorkel, is that a...? Uh, snorkel is an eBay special, but it seems to, seems to work quite well. Exhaust wires in this vehicle? Three inch straight through from Scott's Rods. Small muffler, a little bit loud, but uh, does improve uh, performance substantially. Lockers on this vehicle? Front auto diff lock and it's got a Torsons hybrid LSD in the rear. This vehicle has factory 3.9 uh, ratio diffs. I've replaced these for the 4.3 ratio to compensate for the larger wheels and tyres. It's open centre front and rear fact from factory. Okay so now you've got extreme crawl speed then? Yes. We're now at the back of the vehicle. 
that's just too cool. I think like that. All right, let's have a looky. Alrighty, so this is, uh, is this a foldable bed? Uh, yes, correct. Uh, not a lot going on in the back here. Um, I prefer to um, uh, just have a real quick setup for, for sleeping arrangements. Um, so this just folds out, the seats fold down, this folds out, uh, mattress on top and away I go. Okay, so with the fridge in the back, do you just fold on top of it? Uh, yes, actually the fridge usually sits, sits here. Okay. Um, but uh, just to be able to show the back here, I'll put the fridge in the side door there. Fair enough. Welcome to the interior of Rudy's Pajero. Rudy, let's start with your radio. GME 40 channel UHF. This thing here looks like a radio, but I'm guessing it's not. It's a uh, multi-function gauge. It, it does a turbo timer, boost gauge, voltmeter, and EGTs. Okay, so, and it also works as a um, turbo timer. Correct. And that's your compressor switch? It is a switch for the compressor. The other switch here is for the rear light. This switch here is for the methanol injection. So when you switch it on and then it kicks in when it gets to 12 pounds? So switch it on, kicks in when it gets 12 pounds and uh, the switch illuminates. Oh, when it's using? When it's working. Oh, okay. When it's actually, when it's boosted and it's running. Q&A. So my first question, what are the top three things that you have done to this vehicle that you really like, the mods? Um, I'm pretty big on performance side of things. So I would have to say number one would be the methanol injection. Methanol uh, injection number one. Very cheap to do, very easy to install uh, and really gives it a good kick. And the second one? Second one would be the turbo upgrade. I guess the third one would be the top mount intercooler, all performance related. What is the one thing you must bring when you go out four wheeling, camping, etc.? Uh, I would have to say the number one thing, most important thing for me is garbage bags. We go out and we enjoy these tracks and, and there's a lot of people that take advantage of it and throw their rubbish out the window. And uh, if we don't take care of these four wheel drive areas, uh, then they'll be taken away from us. So I think garbage bags are very important. Too right. I like that answer. Thank yeah. you. So what are some things to look out for when you buy a vehicle like this? With the diesels, with this particular model, the injector pumps are pro, uh, prone to failure. Anything from 250,000 Ks onwards can be quite expensive to recondition. I haven't had any issues with the injector pump on this one and it's pushing 400,000 Ks. There's Pajero Forums, uh, Pajero Club, Australia and Pajero Club WA. If you're looking at buying one of these, I would recommend you join their group and there's a lot of information on there. Very nice people on there also. So what did you have before this vehicle? Uh, many. Uh, before this one, directly before this one was another Pajero which I was swamped and ended up floating out the driver's window. It was a lot of fun. Did you drive it out? <laughs> uh, just barely. Just barely drove it out, but it did end up getting written off. Okay. Uh, and prior to that, I've had a couple of 100 series Land Cruisers. What made you buy this particular model, make and model vehicle? This particular vehicle, not necessarily this particular make and model, this particular vehicle, I bought it because it was a bargain at the time. Okay, so that was the main reason. Yes. Yeah. What's the next mod for this vehicle aside from, you know, putting your engine stuff back in? Just one mod? <laughs> uh, the next, the next one. <laughs> the next, next <laughs> the next one mod. That's a difficult one. I would say I will be refitting the top mount intercooler. Okay. Yeah. Three trips in this vehicle. Top three trips would be Coral Bay. Came back from. Just came back from a fishing trip. Family trip to Potter's Gorge, I believe, is in Collie. Collie. I got, yep. 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 Uh, Wellington Dam. Myself, my wife and the kids love that spot. Uh, and thirdly, uh, we'll binger overnight for fishing and uh, a few drinks with good friends. Excellent. Thanks for having your vehicle on here. Thank you very much, Ronnie. No worries at all. And if you like more information on this vehicle, all the mods and the whole mod, mods list in the description below. And if you like to assist with the creation of content like this, you can go to Patreon. 
facebook.com slash Ronnie Dahl. And please do subscribe right here. And thank you very much for watching. See ya.